Nice. We are now live. Holy cow, that was a quick live, guys. <laughs> What's going on? Welcome. Welcome to the Wade's Ventures YouTube channel. I've got a guest. I got two guests tonight, guys. And um, it's been way overdue. I don't understand why I didn't get them on here sooner, guys. They're in the same state as I am. I'm like 35 minutes away. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I should have just drove over there, you know, <laughs> got some, brought them and the little kiddo some, uh, well, they are healthy guys, so probably not donuts, but, you know, something <laughs> something really healthy. Maybe a shake or something. I need to get in shape, but. We're at like 75% yeah, of the time. Yeah, I eat donuts. I like that. Hey, water? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. Well, you get the whiskey before this, but yeah, it's water now. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's say hello to some people in chat. I want to make this as quick as possible in the sense that I've got a lot of crazy cool questions to ask these guys, and um, I want to get as many nuggets as we possibly can in an hour, so let's see how I do. But let's say hello to some people in chat. Uh, we got Hip Flippin' Mama, the mama of the reselling community is in here. Welcome in. Key Lime Kisses, the artist. Lisa, the real stitch, guys. Frenchie. Fre oh, my gosh. Uh, Chaz, did you see this? Uh, you probably didn't because you guys are crazy busy with the new warehouse. I, uh, I have not even like touched social media stuff <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> get this. It's crazy. This is Frenchie, guys. She's going to be on tomorrow. Oh, nice. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. <laughs> That's way cool. Is she a cop? Uh, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> How does she have this car? <laughs> Frenchie. Frenchie. Is that even legal? I don't know. We're not even. <laughs> that is amazing. Um, all right. So I had to show. Anyways, so really cool week, guys. Stay tuned. We got really cool people coming on here. And although. This couple has been on here before. They, this is the first time we've had a one-on-one -on, -one on the channel here. So before we get started, guys, um, if you have questions, put it in chat. I'm going to constantly put their YouTube channel in chat as well. I do want to ask a question for those that are watching. Type 1 if you're already subscribed to Side Hustle Pros. 2 if you're not. I'm curious to see how many people are already following them because I'm sure 99.9% .9 of you guys already are. But one, if you're following Side Hustle Pros, two, if you're not, and if you're not, what are you doing? Get over there and subscribe right now. <laughs> it's much appreciated, guys. Yeah, wow. Look at all those people. This is exciting. The love in this chat for you guys. Holy hey. moly. Pam, only are you. Oh, we got to get over there and subscribe. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me just make sure I do have their link oh uh, see we got we got coos up in here we got some vipers what's up guys do we do we jeez yeah. look at all this love in here you get <laughs> i'm telling you guys go over there it, it's crazy i'm i'm really i'm it's really awesome to have these two knowledgeable resellers these two knowledgeable people in the same state as me it, it's incredible so i just want to say i appreciate you guys' support on their channel and mine so let's get into this guys um, normally, we ask them kind of basic questions. I think everybody knows um, them, but I'm going to have them introduce themselves and then start with some basic personal questions. Then we'll get right into the nuggets, right into the reselling, right into the fourth quarter information. But without further ado, go ahead and introduce yourself, guys. No pressure, right? Just yeah. Go. <laughs> Wade's like the master of like the rapid fire. Yeah. Yeah, just get to it. Get to just it. I love it. Just get to it. Uh, my name is Charles Leslie, or Chaz, as most people know me as. Um, I, we do a lot of things, but primarily we run Amazon FBA and eBay. Um, lately, I'm all about the eBay grind. Amazon's uh, kind of on a slow kick right now. I just stopped sending in a ton of RA stuff because we're trying to focus on wholesale. So we have a few products that we've been working on improving the listings on the, on the Amazon side. I, on the other hand, right now am all about electronics on eBay with our uh, 100 to 10K challenge, which most of you probably know, know by now. Um, that's kind of where my head has been at. So I focus primarily on electronics, a little bit of hard goods, sporting equipment, bats, that kind of stuff. But that's kind of my ball game right now, and I love it. Yeah. And I'm Trista. Uh, we've been married half. for seven years. 
Yeah. And uh, we have a son and we get to do reselling and kind of call the shots in our life. And that's, that's why we started this. We wanted some time freedom. Mm -hmm. We wanted, um, I mean, that was the big thing, financial freedom, obviously. Uh, but time freedom is probably our most, uh, precious possession we we work hard but we play hard so <laughs> so um i'm i it's funny that uh it's funny that we have um some of their their past professions in here because last night i was asking ashley can i get a massage <laughs> no massage no massage do you get any massages trish like do you get any not so often it's like being married to a mechanic right like you your cars never work so I don't get that many massages, but um, not because he's unwilling. I'm just, I feel bad asking. She's like, stubborn. That's especially what when he'd come home from a long day at the spa, I'd be like, oh, my back hurts. He's <laughs> like, my fingers are going to fall off. So sorry. I guess that's the one piece I, I should have led with that I didn't say is like, my background was a full-time massage therapist, online health and fitness coaching. She yeah. came from the medical field. Um, and we both quit our full-time jobs to do this full-time. So this is what we do. We don't have uh, the jobs anymore, which is a different ball game when you do it full-time. And Wade yeah. knows because he just recently yeah. made that jump. Con it's a whole different ball game. <laughs> Guys, you leave a 40-hour job to work 80, it seems like. But it is super rewarding. Um, it's really, really cool. And thank you so much. Yeah, it's been since April I've been full-time now. So, But this interview is not about me. It's about <laughs> you two. I think that's uh, – and by the way, um, did you poke people while you were you were a nurse, right? What what kind of stuff did you do? You didn't, because I will faint if I see I, blood. <laughs> I don't know if you want to get into it. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. Let's just say. Out. Let's just say she worked at wound care. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. I don't I'd know. Be, I'd, I'll go there. <laughs> I'd be at home at like six, seven o'clock at night when she'd get off work. She'd be like, "Babe, you won't. You can't even guess the size <laughs> of the thing I got to cut open today." <laughs> oh gosh. I, uh, uh, my 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 stomach is not not the greatest, yeah. right? Like, not, not strong guy. But I did actually love my job. I loved my patients. I loved my doctors. But um, in the end, you know, we have such little time with our son. He's only three, and he's gonna go to school soon. And um, I'm just soaking up these years while I can. So uh, we we do have our first question, I think, guys. And if I miss any questions, put them in chat. Put them in bold. Don't worry. Oh, real quick, guys, if you got YouTube channels, Poshmark names, anything like that, you're welcome to put it in chat, too. I promote that on my channel. But that being said, are you going to do any um, Portland or, excuse me, any Oregon meetups? And I got to be honest, like, I am such a, a slacker over here, guys. Not only have I not done any meetups, but I missed the, the two that's, uh, that both this amazing couple, Side Hustle Pros, has put on, guys. I will not miss a third. I promise you that. But, yeah. <laughs> What, what, I'm gonna I'm gonna text your wife and be like, hey, when are you coming? <laughs> make it happen, make it happen. I, it's it's been crazy last, but things are starting to cool, cool off a little bit. And uh, what are what's up with the meetup? Uh, are you probably next year? You think you're gonna do another one after fourth not quarter? Not even that far. We're thinking yeah. it'd be fun to do some type. Of, I'm not gonna commit to anything right now, but I think it'd be fun to do some type of quarterly get together. Yeah. Even if it's not like a big official meetup, just to you know get like five, ten of us together once a quarter, I think it'd be fun. Yeah. Um, as far as like the big official one, uh, we just did host one, which turned out, I had no idea, it ended up being a surprise birthday party. Yeah. I thought like 15 people were gonna show up <laughs> and this one had other plans. So I show up and there was like 40 people. It was, yeah. it was insane, it was amazing. It was great. Uh, so that was a great meetup and that was just a few weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, shout out to everyone who did come because I know I saw some names in here that did come. So thank yeah. you guys, that, that meant a ton. Uh, to me for people to take time out the middle of the Saturday and show up to that. So yeah, we're probably going to be playing on once a quarter to host something. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to talk about that for a minute. I think that people underestimate, um, and you just got, you're fresh off of eBay open. Mm -hmm. I think that people, um, they underestimate the power of networking and, and it's different when you're networking on YouTube or Facebook or on Instagram. You know, there's something different about meeting people face to face, knowing that they're going through the same struggles you're going through. I can't tell you how many times we've come away from a conference or a meetup with fresh ideas for our business that um, have sometimes been game changers. So yeah. um, we we're all about the community. It's 
you know, it's, it's not always easy, but it's definitely rewarding when the people that you are networking with are, are seeing changes in their lives and their businesses. So we will do meetups for as long as we possibly can. Yeah. And we do our big thing with the meetups. It's funny for all the meetups we have hosted, we've rarely done them here in Oregon. Yeah. Anytime that we travel, even if we're doing like, you know, for example, we went down to Disneyland. Um, that's kind of our yearly thing. Every April we go down to Disneyland for her birthday mm -hmm. and uh, we host a meetup every time we travel. So yeah. it doesn't matter if it's for business for personal, we at least host one big di dinner meetup um, every time that we go. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know who this is, but hashtag no pants Tuesday. I completely <laughs> think that should be a thing. <laughs> that, that, that had to been Katie guys. And she said that she swapped from a number two to number one. Awesome. It, it, we, we like to do a lot of that number two, number one stuff over here. Cause we, uh, you guys, I, it's incredible. And I, I can't, the one thing about, um, meetups that I, okay. So guys, whether you're going to eBay open or you're going to any like local meetup, whoever's, whoever's doing it right. Um, the energy that you get out when you're done, you just want to go home and crush it. Like it's not just, it's, it's crazy networking. It's really cool to meet people in person. And I got to meet you guys in person. It just, it brings another aspect to your guys' re relationship as resellers and friends. But more importantly, though, when you leave these cool events, you just feel amped up to just go back home and crush it. Yeah. Yes, the thing I love about that, too, is the fact that most most of us that resell, it's a lonely game, right? Like if you just if you get raw with it, it's a pretty lonely game, right? You're sitting here behind your phone taking photos and listing and all that kind of stuff. And the, it, that's great, but the problem with it is, because it's something I've ran into mentally, is if you sit here by yourself and do this all day long, all week long by yourself, you're only going to push yourself so far. But when you have other people around you that are maybe doing better, that levels you up because you want to get up to that level and, and keep pushing. Yeah. That's why I love surrounding yourself with people who are playing at a higher level, right? You can play a small hobby game if you want. But if you want to, I think most people that do resell eventually want to do it full time. I think that's a pretty common thread. Um, so if you want to get to that point, like you got to level up. And that means surrounding yourself with people that are playing at a higher level because you'll always play at the same level until you put yourself in that environment. Yeah. Yep. You're uh, whoever, you know, they, they always say hang out with like people hang out with kind of their like minded, you know, people like minded like yourself. But I think um, another spin off to that um, is we all give off energy. And I've said this before, but like, you know, positive, like, you know, really good energy to like better yourself and better your business and hang out with people like that. You're going to do the same thing. I want to bring this up too, guys, because I say this all the time, but I'm a lurker on Instagram. <laughs> and uh, I do want to highlight their, their Instagram guys. And uh, guys, if you're not following them on Instagram, I don't know if you can see that. Give them a follow. They've got a whopping... 2,000 followers, I mean, 21,000 followers on there, and they've got a really good Instagram, guys, really good stuff. So I creep your Instagram all the time, not only because you're in Oregon, but because you have a great <laughs> Instagram. Appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. That's awesome. All right, so let's get into this. So real quick, we're going to do personal stuff, guys. Then we're going to get into the reselling stuff, try to get some nuggets out because I know they have a lot. But first I want to know, so you both had jobs. You went full-time. How long have you been going full time? Is my first question, and second question is: Is what does the parents of you two think about you reselling full time? More importantly, when you guys went full time, what did they think about you guys going full time reselling? Okay, that's, that's a, a good one. That's an interesting. I don't think anyone's ever asked us no, that question. Before. I love I love like <laughs> this the types of questions that no one else really hits on. Um, for me, I actually didn't quit my job when I started reselling. I was able to fortunately build up my own personal massage clientele and personal training business online. So I did that while I was working full time, 40, 50 hours a week at a big fancy spa doing massage therapy. And on the side, my side hustle was building up my own personal clientele of massage clients. So I was able to actually do that and quit my job. I walked out July 14th of 2014, I remember. 2014. So I'm now on four years deep of being self-employed. Um, and then it was to that late 2015, I got introduced to Amazon FBA and started reselling. Yeah. So that's kind of my personal timeline. So I was a good year and a half in on self-employment of doing a different business, but still self-employment uh, for a year and a half before I started doing that. Yeah. And I will add in there that when he was 
going um, on his own, basically, getting his own clientele. We had a, a little um, clinic downtown. Uh, I was also pregnant, and we were going to have our first baby. So that was horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> a little scary. <laughs> wow. That is so, crazy. It was a leap of faith. It was a definite like, leap of faith. It was either going to work or we were going to be royally screwed. <laughs> I, I, I operate best under pressure. I think a lot of yeah. us do. Like I operate best under pressure, so I couldn't have a plan B or I would always rely on it. Yeah. So I, I mean, I just took the leap and it worked. It worked. <laughs> so, and then I've been uh, home completely full time doing reselling for two years. Uh, February. February. Yeah. Uh, and what, 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 what do they think? They think? I don't actually think that they know what we do. Still. They really don't. <laughs> even even for me, like four, so. Here's the thing: we've been married for seven, but we've been together for almost twelve. Mm -hmm. Twelve years this January, so we've been together for a while. And I will never forget the moment that I quit my job, which was a year in, or no, three years before you quit your job. Yeah, I went self-employed, and our parents are kind of you know they grew up in a different era, like. You get your stable job for 40 years and that's it. Build your white picket fence and you're done. So when I'll never forget when I quit my job and her dad and I had a conversation and he asked, he's like, so are you going to plan on getting like a more secure position somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> of course he's worried about his daughter. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm, I'm doing quite well by myself, but you know, I appreciate, I appreciate it. So yeah. even to this day, they, they still don't quite yeah, they, understand. They, they see the products of what we've created, um, but there's I don't think that there's a lot of understanding. Um, but we've always had a lot of support from our parents to yeah. just do what we want to do, basically. And um, so I'm, I think that we both probably had those cautionary conversations from our parents. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they, they've totally supported us. Yeah. And... They're great. Um, we've always said I don't know, a hundred times or more that we are so blessed to have grandparents who want to have our son all the time. And so we, we have this huge support system. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's honestly like we truly are lucky to have that. Cause we know that's a rare thing to have both yeah. sets of parents within 15 minutes. Uh, so that has been a huge blessing. So yeah. even though they haven't truly understood it, yeah. Especially when they walk into like our warehouse, like they just see <laughs> crap everywhere. And to them, it, I can't even imagine what they think it looks like, but to us, it's organized chaos. Yeah. Uh, even though they don't quite understand, they've always been an amazing support. So that's, that's been great. Yeah. I, I remember, um, what was it? Two or three days ago. I don't remember if it was on your YouTube channel or your Instagram, but you made a post basic uh, Instagram. I think you made a post, you were sitting there and you're like, like you have that moment, you sit in your new warehouse and you look around and you're like, holy cow, how the heck did I get here? Yeah. <laughs> I see her up there like doing something. <laughs> I'm just like it, it's got to be like, I say this a lot, people probably get tired of it, but you wake up together and you're like, you know, you have one common goal, one business. It's got to be such an amazing experience, mm -hmm. you know, as a family. And so uh, I think that's really cool. Now I try to get the first, I try to get... I try to get the news on this channel, guys. I try to give you the skinny quick. And uh, they have a really cool son, three years old. But uh, is there baby number two on the way? No, the reason I'm asking is because I got a new baby. And <laughs> I figured I'd, get, I'd, I'd be the first to get anything here. Like, are we are we thinking about a second? <laughs> um, not on the way. Not on the way. <laughs> but thinking about. Yeah, you, you know, you have to kind of warm up to that idea. Like, especially... Your set, your first son is uh, two, right? Uh, almost two. Yeah, he's getting, and then the second, uh, Axel, is, um, gosh, he's he's literally two months and and two days. Wow. So, yeah. There's a switch happens between the ages of two and three. Um, I'm sorry, it's coming. Um, <laughs> I wanted three in the beginning, like before we had kids. I'm like, yeah, three is a perfect number, yeah. and then we had one. I'm like. Two's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two's fine. Two's, Two's, fine. Two's good. <laughs> uh, but there's an attitude switch that happens between ages two and three, and um, he's challenging lately. He's uh, he's a handful. Because he's our kid. Yeah. 
like you get two like hard headed entrepreneurs and we're, yeah. we're bound to, to breed something that's a pretty strong will <laughs> personality. <Yeah. laughs> I feel like we're going to have like a little mini Steve jobs. He's going to be one smart fellow. You know, um, I see him running around the warehouse. You guys are building ramps with boxes. Oh, really? yep. We have a blast. Like he, li like he knows how to operate a tape gun. He knows how to use the scanner. It's crazy. <laughs> Put him to work early. Put him to work early. I, guys, a little tip. If you're on Poshmark, um, what I've been seeing a lot of the moms do for kids that are a little bit older is they'll do play games where you share X amount of clothing and then you win a prize. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, so workers out there. <laughs> All right. So we got, uh, we, we have, I think we're, we're getting there now. Any, um, I want to, I always like to ask this question. If, if, if you walked it or somebody walked up to you and you explain what you do, how are you explaining that you're a reseller? Do you get that glazed look in their eyes? Like, how does that work when people, it could be friends, family, strangers, when they ask what you guys do for a living? It depends on who asks. Yeah. I think that we mostly blanket statement just that we're online resellers or that we're, we have I, an online retail business. Yeah. That's, yeah. The, that's like the verbiage we use and yeah. it gets a lot more like positive feedback. Yeah. If we just use the verbiage, like we run an online retail business, people are like, Oh, that's cool. Like they have no yeah. idea how it works, but they think it's cool. <laughs> Cause there's been times where like, what do you do? I'm like, well, we run Amazon FBA. We do this and we do eBay. And then I sell electronic. Like I just started this new Instagram account. You got to check it out. Like I'm trying to like tell them everything. It's just way too much. Yeah, it's glazed over. So it's definitely got to be the um, just the blanket statement of like we run an online retail business, and then on the side we do help other people start as well. That's kind of like our verbiage that we go with. And, and who cooks in the who cooks in the house? Who's the cook? He is. I would definitely be the cook. I am not the cook. <laughs> not the cook. Well, we're we're thinking about uh, doing some meal planning too over here in the Wade's Ventures house, but. Uh, it's tough when you're full-time reseller, guys. I'm telling you, but yeah. it's rewarding. Um, like I said, you leave a 40-hour to work 80, it seems like. So our <laughs> modern family, Fred Stanford. That's funny. If you're a picker, we got to get you on here. All right, so let's get into this, guys. Let's get into this. Uh, and, and by the way, um, I w I'm going to put – you guys know the drill. If you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, um, subscribe and tell me what number you are. <laughs> you probably can't because they're over a certain amount. But let me know if you subscribe to them. I'll shout you out in chat. So, guys, fourth quarter is around the corner, right? Oh, Literally. It is, is. It is good. It, before we get into this, is there anything on the wish list? Because this is always interesting being a reseller. Is there anything that he wants for Christmas or she wants for Christmas? No wish. Are we talking about personal or for the business? <laughs> personal, personal, or it could be business. It could be business. It's, it, there's one thing lately I've noticed. Like I get ridiculously excited about like supplies. It's <laughs> stupid. <really> does. <laughs> I know mine would be lately with the electronics account that I've been running. I would love an impulse sealer. Yeah. Like, I just think the impulse sealer and creating that custom bag look for each thing, like calculators, Walkman, the smaller stuff would look really clean. He spends a re an absurd amount of time on detail on pretty much anything he does. Um, <laughs> you know, I really spend way too much time YouTube like YouTube or Instagram custom. or Facebook related. He's always crazy with the detail. Um, so I. <laughs> I can just imagine, like, hey, why aren't you home? Where are you? I'm at the office. I've got an impulse seal, like, 40, 40 cords. Like, he'd love it. He'd just... or, or, or podcast? Yeah. Maybe. I, I know he's been wanting to start one, but. I've been yes. wanting to. I've, have, I've been having to, like, not start because I don't want to, like, I don't want to put 50% into it. You know how that goes, right? It's like I'm. I love to put a like I dive into anything I start and I've mm -hmm. I've already burned myself out way too many times by committing to too many projects that I'm only giving a few percent of effort into. So I've learned I have to just focus on one thing at a time. So podcast, I would love to, but it's gonna have to wait for now. Yeah. You're all yeah. And now um, we'll we'll talk in a little bit about, you know, maybe getting employees in this not, but the the next question is gonna be what are you guys doing like right now today to prepare for fourth quarter and explain fourth quarter? Basically guys, it's one of the most busiest months for, you know, a lot of, a lot of resellers, especially new products and stuff like that. And even Q1 is pretty good too. I got to admit, but what are you guys doing to like prepare for fourth quarter coming up? 
you want to start with that or me? Uh, you can start. All right. Yeah. Um, so running multiple platforms, you have to kind of pay attention to what you know is going to be in demand. Number one is toys. That's always obviously a big, big one for Q4. So I'm paying attention. It's a little too early to tell. There's a few of the items on my list right now that I think are going to do really, really well for Q4 as far as toys go. So you're paying attention to what new toys are coming out on the shelves. Pay attention to the stocks. Because if you see a toy that just came out and then you go back a week later and the shelf is clear, probably a good sign that it's going to be a hot item. So you're paying attention to all, this thing, all these things. And we learned that from last year because the year before that was Hatchimals. Hatchimals was pretty much the only hot toy. Yeah, that year. was a weird year. It was just that It was toy. just that, but then yeah. last year it started with fingerlings and then it spread out to like 20 different hot items. So we don't know this year if there's gonna be one or if it's gonna be another game of 20. Mm -hmm. So I'm paying attention to which toys are being stocked, how fast they're selling through. I'm literally like taking notes when I'm at the stores. And this is just the research phase, right? Um, number two is I'm looking at not just Q4, but the winter season. Because then you can start to look at health and personal care items, what type yeah. of items sell really well during during uh, Q4, which obviously is the great season for reselling, but it's the winter season. So you're looking at cold and flu, that kind of category. Um, so there's a couple different things I'm looking for on the Amazon side. eBay side, this is my first year. Um, I've only been doing this electronics account on my personal eBay account for the last five weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know how well electronics are going to do in winter. Yeah. I'm just going to keep sourcing the way I'm sourcing and things are selling through uh, pretty darn quick right now for me. So I'm just going to keep doing that for the eBay side. Yeah. And I would say, um, so I primarily just sell uh, used clothing on eBay. Um, so basically I am always just going through thrift stores. I don't do a lot of new retail. So actually I see that slow down a bit for me in Q4. Just people are buying gifts and not not normally buying used clothing as a gift. Um, but like Charles said, just watching those trends um, and paying attention to what's going on. Like one of the big things that I'm gonna be looking at is um, is toys this year because Toys R Us isn't on the, on the market anymore. So um, those customers are going to go somewhere and so hopefully they're coming to eBay. Um, I feel like eBay's done a pretty good job of um, maybe attracting new customers and bringing back some old, older customers that maybe had left the platform or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to be more friendly to the, you know, free shipping, free returns, and you know, just that sort of thing. So I, I think we're gonna see a a lot more people coming to the eBay platform. So just being ready for those customers when they come. So good. I, I want to ask you. This, uh, how are you guys managing uh, the multiple platforms on eBay? Like, how are you guys like responding to multiple messages on? Do you guys have two phones, or how, or maybe do you get do you handle one store and you handle another? Because I know you have multiple eBay stores, right? Yeah. yeah. So and that's just a recent thing since I started that 10K challenge with the electronics. Um, so as of five weeks ago, we now have two eBay stores, and we just separate them. So I run a hundred percent of the electronics store. If for some reason. I'm out of the office and I've got stuff that needs to be shipped out. I can call her. She knows how to prep electronics and send them out. Um, and she knows how to access the account and all that. But yeah. we kind of just, I mean, we create clear mm -hmm. roles for each other. Yeah. So her eBay account is her eBay account. Mine is mine. Um, but if needed, we can help each other out. Um, just because they're two completely different categories yeah. that I know nothing about used clothing. Um, like Wade and I can walk into a Ross and I would go to shoes. He would go to clothes like that. He, we have each other's like categories. Um, but if we need to, I know how to ship like just today, she was here at the house and she had Titus and he, uh, what was he doing? Was he playing or something? Yeah, we and, just, I just didn't want to leave the house. Yeah. Trista, <laughs> Trista called me. She's like, Hey, I've got two items that need to go out. Can you ship those? And one was a pair of shoes. So I know how to custom box the shoes. And then number two was this like heavier sweater. Thing and she's like, put that in a padded flat rate envelope. And I tried to put it in the first time, like that's not fitting in the flat rate envelope. And so I boxed it and it was going to be $15 to ship. And I'm like, you know what? If she can do it, I can do it. So I like, I like, I didn't play nice with the, with the sweater. Like I folded it perfectly, wrapped it up and then it fit inside of that thing. I'm like $7 done. Got it. 
So we know who does the clothes in the house. Yes. We do. And I think that that's um, a lot of people, this isn't part of your question, but a lot of people ask us, how do you work with your husband or how do you work with your wife? I couldn't do that. We have such <laughs> a hard time or we butt heads. And I think it comes down to like, we don't agree on everything. And um, so having clear boundaries about what he does, what I do, that's not to say that we don't help each other. Definitely. We help each other all the time. But, um, you know, if I, I like to, um, hang my clothes a certain way when I photograph them. And if he did it the wrong way, I might yell at him over it. So it's just a clear boundary that I do the things that I, that I prioritize that, um, I want them to be a certain way. And, uh, same with him. Wait, you know, I, and I think that's, I wish it would be awesome. I know it's not possible. You know how you go have an Instagram account and you can do like, I only have one account, but Ashley's got to, and she's, she can toggle at the top between two different accounts. Um, wouldn't that be awesome? I know eBay probably won't promote it and they're not going to spend the money on it, but it would be awesome if um, you can do the same thing with eBay. So like you can get both eBay store messages on one phone as yeah. opposed to, you know, that would be handy. Um, so you don't miss any like offers and stuff like that. That would be sweet. I would love to see an update like that. Amazing. eBay. I know you're not watching. Sorry guys. <laughs> like, the good Lord himself is shining his light on this, on this, <laughs> on this, uh, on this cool thing. But yeah, um, eBay, if you're not, wa I know you're not watching this, but <laughs> if you are, take notes. We would love to see that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, I, I want to, uh, no, no order guys, but I like to ask this question because sometimes it helps people. So in, I always have you guys bring out your phone too, if you can't remember, but is there any apps or any websites or any tools that you guys use on your reselling journey. Now it could be, it could be directly reselling or it could be something like that helps you thrift or, or just be like a little bit more savvy with spending money, whether it be like saving on groceries or whatever the case may be. Is there anything that you guys use apps, websites, like anything at all for your reselling journey? Can you just name them off? Uh, I'm just going to go off what's up top of my head. Number one is Google calendars. Like I run, this is where we are completely different. <laughs> I run my life based on my calendar on my phone because I can set time blocks. I can set alerts. I run my life on that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a very scheduled person. Like it's very rare. I will ever answer a phone call unless it's on my calendar pre-scheduled. Right. And if I got family calling me, of course I'm going to answer. But for, for the most part, people know that that, that stuff's got to be like, it's got to be on my schedule. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a very scheduled person. So I, that's my number one app that I use my calendar. Um, anytime that I have like my morning routine, like I don't, no one gets a hold of me before 10 a.m. Like it's hard for my wife to get a hold of me before 10 a.m. because I have a very specific morning routine that I follow. Um, and it's all scheduled in my calendar. So I have alerts that pop up for all that. So that's number one. Uh, number two is just use the, use the app. Like if you're talking about eBay specifically, um, or even Amazon, use the Amazon seller app and use the eBay app, the eBay app and sold listings. This is the number one question I'm getting on my electronics accounts. Chaz, how are you selling stuff so fast? Easy. When I'm checking sold comps, I'm not buying stuff that's not showing consistent sales. It's that simple. If I see that something is selling multiple times each month, chances are if I take good quality photos, price competitively, use the right keywords, my stuff just might sell. I don't know. <laughs> it's just weird how the math works out that way. So the eBay app and the Amazon sellers app, uh, like I keep it so super simple. I don't like to complicate the business. I like to keep it as simple as I can. So those are the top three things that I have on my phone that I use. All right. May, may have oh, no, it didn't. I'm just gonna sit back like this. You know what I've done in some of those situations with the light? I've taken a box and taped it up there. <laughs> oh, that is smart. I've that done is, it a couple times. I've, I've got to do that, guys. I've got to do that. Um, all right. So, what about what about you? What what kind of apps do you use? Any apps on your phone other than that? Um, I mean, we use. Yeah, I mean that's our eBay app, our Movie Amazon. Pass. We have a movie pass, that's not real. <laughs> but the new rules on movie pass, guys? Oh, wow. We don't have time to get into we that. We can't talk about that right now. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was sad. That was sad. Yeah. Uh, 
I think I think somebody will buy him out, and it won't be as cool, but it'll be you know it'll yeah. be cool. You know, I agree. Um, um, and then obviously I'm on Poshmark, so I'm using the Poshmark app. Uh, what else? I do. Um, I do have two other things I can add. Yeah, um, I was thinking that too. Um, but also I use coupon stuff like Retail Me Not. Huh. That's kind of my favorite one, actually. Uh, so I'm just gonna give the game away. It's nothing groundbreaking. On, on, on the channel. <laughs> on the channel. Yeah. Yes. So here we go. <laughs> Everyone's asking, how am I sniping these deals for my electronics account? You ready? Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and Offer Up. This is why Portland people are probably having a struggle right now because <laughs> I'm on that. I will out. I will out snipe anyone in the Portland area because I'm on that app. All three of them, every day, every hour, sniping those deals. Um, oh, those man. are those are probably my best ones. Um, Pac-Man, Justin down here mentioned another really good one too, which is BrickSeek.com. Um, that's what I use when I do uh, when I was doing heavy on the retail arbitrage side. That's an amazing uh, tool to use. You're not going to score every single time you use that and go find something that's on it, but it is a really good resource to use as well. Yeah. Um, aside from that, like we keep everything super simple. Yeah. I've got like you know, websites and programs we use for the Amazon stuff, you know, inventory lab, app Eagle for repricing, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you don't need any of that, right? Just use your eBay and Amazon sellers app and, um, and you can Keepa. build your business and keep up for Amazon, keepa.com. You, you can't do Amazon unless you know how to read a keep a chart. Like if you really want to, you can get to 5k a month, just kind of winging it. That's not that hard if you put in the time and the money, but if you want to go to 10k, 20k, 30k, 40k a month, you got to get like wicked good at that. That comes down to learning how to read a keep a chart. Guys, um, so I used to be able to get, uh, I used to, it's just, it's weird sitting like this, but we'll do it for a little bit. I used to get um, um, ink here in Oregon. The ink has ceased to exist, okay? And I think I know why. I think I know why <laughs> there's no more ink in Oregon, guys. No more ink. It's because... It's because somebody over here is sniping the <laughs> ink. Is that what's going on? I do buy a, a fair amount of toner. <laughs> man, man. Dude, guys, a lot of people don't like, you know, they, they, it, if, if something is not there, you got to find another way to, to succeed. And I know now why there's no ink in Oregon, guys. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, we haven't picked up ink in a while. I was hitting it really hard. It was ink and calculators. That's all I did. I was hitting those really hard. Um, now I'm into more of the electronic side. I, I, I look up toner every now and then. So right now, if you're going to go for toner and ink, right now is the time to do it because I'm not really focusing on it too much. <laughs> all right, guys. And that was our show. That was our show. <laughs> um, so how are we shipping out these electronics? Are you doing it? Um, are you doing free shipping? Kind of Step me through the process real quick of how you guys are shipping out these electronics. Yeah, so the electronics specifically, there's basically, I have two sizes of electronics. Very rarely am I dealing with like manageable medium items, which would be nice. My items are either calculators, Walkman, CD players, like portable ones. So I'm dealing with first class or I'm dealing with FedEx Smart Post. Those are like my, are actually recently, I don't know if you've messed around with FedEx much, but recently home delivery is actually being a lot cheaper um, if it's only going a few states over, that's been really nice. And it gets there within like three to five days rather than up to a week, which is what the uh, smart post shows. I think it's eight days actually. Um, so my typical setup is I bubble wrap and then I stretch wrap. I think the stretch wrap adds a really clean, tight look to it. That's just what I personally prefer. I've been doing that for many months and my customers seem to like it. So I'm going to keep doing it. It is a little extra step. It's not necessary and it's a little extra work, but again, like she mentioned, I'm a little uh, OCD with some things and detail oriented. <laughs> so I just like that clean stretch wrap look. Um, so if it's a bigger item, I do the same setup where I'm still going to bubble wrap, obviously, with receivers, amplifiers, the big heavy stuff. You want to bubble wrap the crap out of those. Make sure the corners are going to be in. Um, if a corner drops, it's not going to have too bad of an impact. So you want to make sure that cushioning is your number one. I stretch wrap those. If there's any cords or remote, then on top, I'll do a few layers, and then on top, I'll put that and then stretch wrap it on top. So it's all acting as one unit. 
and then I basically will list it as smart post, but I cross check home delivery and see which one's going to be cheaper versus how much time it's going to take to get there. I think that's uh, I, all, customer service is key guys. And I think like shipping goes hand in hand with customer service because it eliminates like damaged goods. And um, I try to do the same thing. I don't do that, the shrink wrap and I should, but I don't do a lot of electronics. Mm -hmm. um, and if I did, I use that on uh, shoes a lot sometimes yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what, what are, and we got some basic ones here, but I get a lot of these questions. Like how are you guys handling your taxes? I know that you're not tax professionals obviously, but mm -hmm. Do you guys have a CPA? What was the process of finding a CPA? Like, how does that work? How does that work? Here's my super fancy system to taxes. <laughs> I have my Excel sheets and my receipts and all that kind of stuff. And then I say, here you go, Kyle. <laughs> and then he tells me how much I owe. <laughs> so we do have a CPA. We do use um, GoDaddy. Yeah, we use GoDaddy, um, which is awesome because it syncs up with all your eBay fees and all that kind of stuff. So that's a really good one to use. Yep. Um, so that definitely helps out. They give you reports, and that's what I give to my CPA. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually using him before we started reselling because, again, when we were just regular jobs, so you get a W-2, those are super easy to do yourself. So we were using um, – what was the – what's the popular one? TurboTax. Like Turbo yeah. So we're using yeah. TurboTax, all the basic online stuff cost you like 30, 40 bucks to do. That was easy. But the second I went self-employed doing massage therapy and fitness coaching, I I wasn't even going to mess with tax stuff. I didn't know about <laughs> tax write-offs. I didn't know about what I can deduct. So that's when I went out and I sought out um, a fitness specific. He helps other fitness professionals uh, with taxes and it's a CPA. And then I when I started reselling, I brought to him, hey, we just started doing Amazon FBA and eBay. It's, th it's online retail. Do you know anything about it? And he's had experience with it. So he got in there and knew exactly what to do. So we lucked out. Uh, yeah. We got a really good guy on the first shot. But we always tell people just um, go and you can kind of interview people and just a CPA, a good CPA is worth the money you're going to pay them because they're finding all of these tax write-offs and um, they're saving you money in the long run. This is not, um, you know, if you get audited, you don't want to mess with that. You know, you just want to be able to say, this is my CPA. He's already done all of this stuff for me or she, and, and it just be organized in there and be fully confident that it's been done correctly. And I've had a lot of people that will be, cause I tell them like, would you pay like six, seven, 800, but maybe 12, I don't know how much your CPA would be, but if you pay like six or 700 bucks to have your taxes all done, people are like, Oh, I can do that myself. Like, yeah, you could, but it's going to take you two weeks of stress. And then <laughs> yeah. if you get audited, you can't even imagine how many hours that takes. Like, I'd rather have somebody that's that's a professional that mm -hmm. I can just pay and it's all done for me and I have somebody back me up if I do get audited. Yeah. The biggest thing I think, too, guys, is um, – so here's the thing that – I mean, all that, 100% correct, amazing. But also, too, like you want a middleman between you and the government. Like – if, if it's just you, you want that middle person there, like a buffer, you know what I mean? So I think that's crazy, crazy good tips. And I, I, I really like the tip that you said, it's kind of like to, to get a few of them. And, you know, cause you don't have to like, I see a lot of people settle on the first CPA they find. There's a lot. I like to find a CPA that's kind of close to my area so I can drive and like knock on their door if I need to. Yeah, yeah. That's just me. But um, how are you guys, uh, two questions. One, are you using, how are you using to track your miles? Cause I know you guys drive quite a bit. And two, um, can, can you give us like four or five things that you guys think that a lot of people don't realize you can use as tax write-offs? Uh, Mile IQ is the app that we use. Uh, I was using another one early on. It was called uh, Everlance. Is that it? I don't remember. I think it was called Everlance was the other app I was using early on. Now we switched to Mile IQ. Um, as far as what you can write off, there's a lot. <laughs> it's like, it's going to vary. Like, yeah, I'm hesitant to say anything because it varies state to state. Some CPAs are a little more risk tolerance than other ones. But for me, like the thing that shocked me was with, um, and here's where I'm like, I don't know if it's because I was doing health and fitness coaching specifically, but supplements. Mm -hmm. So different things I was taking for my own health chiropractic care if you get massage therapy that's kind of stuff you can write off and that stuff you can write off as a reseller because when you're prepping and boxing and all that kind of stuff it's physical work 
and you can write off stuff like massage therapy, chiropractic visits, um, help, anything that falls under personal care. You can typically, talk, and again, talk to your CPA. Please, yeah. please talk to your CPA with any They'll of those. They'll tell you whether yeah. you can really write this stuff off or not. I mean, but just the basics, using your phone for, you can't you can't do anything without your phone, right? Yeah, your cell phone uh, bill, you Internet. should absolutely, you can't write off 100% unless right. it's a dedicated business line. Yeah. But our personal cell phones, you can write off a pretty good percentage um, um, since you're using it. When we were running our business in our home, we were able to write off, uh, utilities and we're still writing off a little bit because we're doing like laundry with the used clothing and stuff yeah. there's there's all these kinds of little things that you would never really think about so that's why I say a good CPA is worth their weight in gold you know they're they're out there you just have to find them interview them uh, I guys like I said it this is this is I think this is really sometimes basic questions but like it, every every experience is different. I think it's really cool that you're on here giving this information because there's maybe some people have no idea. And the worst thing I can tell you about this, and we'll move on, is uh, not doing anything and just you know not paying taxes at all. That that can get you, especially start making some good money. So, yeah. um, all right. So real quick, um, healthcare. Like now that you guys are full time, are you guys paying for quite a bit of money out of pocket for healthcare? That's a big question I get. Yeah, healthcare is probably the number one thing that scares people yeah. away from going full time because <laughs> it's always a question. Um, there's a lot of different options out there. Um, check with your states, right? Depending on your income level, your states will mm -hmm. will um, provide one. Um, what was the name of the? Was it MediShare? Yep. Whoa. There's there's a lot of newer companies coming up. Somebody posted about this. It was a few months ago, and I screenshotted it. But there's a lot of new private companies coming up that are you know like. Aside from the normal marketplace like Blue Cross and like, you know, we have like Kaiser and all of that stuff yeah. here. Um, so like Charles said, just find um, in your state, there's lots of resources. Um, you will pay, and those, you yeah, will pay I a mean, penny for it. That's one of the prices that you, one of the trade-offs. It's not a price really, but it's a trade-off for sure. You yeah. know, you, the, um, there are perks with having a job and, and that's why people stay with their jobs usually. Um, so you just have to work around it. Yeah. And specifically on that topic, because that's a big one is if you are in a position where you or your spouse has an amazing setup as far as benefits, mm -hmm. don't get too trigger happy with going full time and quitting that job. If it's going to have an impact on those benefits, because you have to weigh out again, like Trista said, it's a trade-off, so you have to really know what is best for your family. I know plenty of people that still have a regular job because they have amazing benefits and they love what they do, but then they're reselling their butt off um, as a side hobby, and it's just a decision they made. So, I and, and that and that just comes down to like it's easy to watch Instagram accounts and YouTube accounts, and it's easy to get motivated to do it full time because you see what's put online, and it's like, oh my gosh, look at that lifestyle! I want that too. And then you quit your job, you're like, oh, I don't have any health insurance now. Crap. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, it's it's a trade-off. You really got to know what's best for your situation. Mm -hmm. Guys, it is – it is. Um, you get a lot of glamour, right? Because a lot of people, you know – and and when I say a lot of people, even including myself, like we we show the good stuff. But there is a lot behind the scenes there that, that it's tough going full-time. Um, there's a lot of things that I did that um, I thought I was prepared for and I wasn't. Um, and you know, I, I find that a lot of people too, when they go full time and I could be wrong, they go full time and then they go out sourcing, which is what you need to do. But I find that, you know, you spend a lot of time out there sourcing, but not time, not a lot of time listing that actually brings in the money. And then, you know, you only have really one, one shot. There's right. Unless you have to lock um, or, you know, you marry somebody that's really wealthy or, or something like that because at the end of the
and you guys are all subscribed to them. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, they'll be in the description. I'll put their Instagram and I'll put their YouTube, so subscribe to them. Uh, if you can go back in time, this is a good one. What would you guys do differently to prepare before you go full time? Um, um, can I take that one? Yeah. <laughs> this is based on all the mistakes that we made. <laughs> yeah, you ready? <laughs> Number made, one. We made some good ones. Yeah. Have a big enough savings account that you can live on for six months if you had no income coming in. That's number one. I think too many people, including ourselves, you quit your job thinking you're making money with eBay or Amazon or resell or any side side hustle, at, right? It doesn't have to be reselling related. But if your side hustle is, to, is bringing in money, you're like, oh my gosh, cool. I'm bringing in 3K a month. If I go full time, I could do 5K a month. Okay, but then you got to look at covering all your bills. Your again, we just talked about health insurance, all the little stuff that adds up. And here's the kicker: you've got to have more capital to put into more product in order to scale up each month. The biggest mistake we made was we didn't have a big enough savings saved up, so that when our savings ran out. We had to pull from our business every month to pay our bills and we were left with the same amount of money month mm -hmm. after month. So we had the same amount of product going in, the same amount of sales yeah. month after month. So there was a big, like, I don't know what you call it. Like, um, it was a very slow growth. Curve. Yeah. Like our, our growth curve was pretty sloped and not, not spiky because mm -hmm. you know, we were like Charles said, pulling money. So we're really only investing the same amount every month into our business. So we were just kind of treading water there. There was not a lot of growth. Yeah. So that's the biggest one is your cash flow and your savings have to be on point. If you mm -hmm. decide to make that leap of faith. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I mean, that really is it. Like that's the biggest factor. Number two, you've got to have, like I struggle with using the word motivation anymore because motivation, and I, 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 this is my personal opinion. I believe motivation is just a temporary state of mind. I believe that it's the same thing as happiness or anger or joy or sadness. All right. It's something that when you're in that state of mind, you're a heightened sense of emotion. So like when you're angry, you're like really angry. You'll say stuff you don't mean. You'll do things you don't want to do. And then you come back down to neutral and you're like, Oh, I felt bad about saying that or whatever. But the same thing happens when you're motivated, right? You say, I'm going to do this. Like you're so hyped up to do all the things and crush life. But then you come back down to neutral. You're like, well, I, you know, I'm kind of tired today. Or like, I don't, I don't know. I had a long day at work. I don't really feel like listing. Yeah. Right. Everyone has a neutral and everyone knows what I'm talking about here. Um, so the point being, don't rely on being motivated. Because when you first start a workout program, when you first go full time for yourself, think about when you first started eBay, you first started Amazon, you were motivated. You, of course, That's it was exciting. easy. Yeah. Things are easy to do when you have money in the bank and you're excited to do it. But what happens when you have to go through the struggles, right? It's mental toughness that's built then. So my point of number two is if you're going to go into being self-employed, you need to learn the difference between being motivated and committed to your outcome that you set. Because commitment means you're going to show up and do the work every day, and it doesn't matter what you feel like. Okay? Results don't care if you're sick. Results don't care if you feel like it or not. They just care if you show up and do the work and stay committed. So commitment versus motivation is like the big, big one that I wish I had developed a little bit earlier on. Because there's been many, many times where I'm like, you know what? I'm just not really going to get out of the house today and do a whole lot because I don't feel like it. <laughs> but then I complain about having slow sales that week. Weird how that works. So that's oh, yeah. my, my personal tangent on yeah. that. And I would, I would add on to that, um, going full time or, or even just seeing any kind of growth in your business. If you can get in these communities, find partnerships with people who are doing what you are doing or even that are doing way better than you. And, you know, I mean, mentorships are hard to come by, uh, but even just creating friendships with people who will push you and, and that you can bounce ideas off of and create some kind of check and balance for yourself and your business. Um, 
that will help you grow. Mm -hmm. and hope is not a strategy. Right? <laughs> Amen to that. Um, you bring your hope as your business plan to a, somebody who's going to give you a loan. Yeah. <laughs> What's your business plan? I hope it works. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I've got a lot of other questions. I got to jam them in real quick because I know we're running out of time. But I want to ask you garage sale season is ending, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, the electronic guy in you, you've got to be a little bit sad about that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but I want to ask you, so do you guys have any strategies for garage selling? Do you go together? Do you have her go to gentlemen and you go to the ladies when you purchase or ask for, for, um, you know, lower prices, give us the, the nuggets there for the garage sales. She's cute. So she does the negotiating. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we do, there was only like, I can only think of two times we went garage selling separately. Yeah. We year. go together cause it's kind of like date day for us. Too. Yeah. So we there's two sides to that coin. One is that's like for us, that was like a full day together with, mm -hmm. without our son, which, you know, parents get it. Like you love your kids, but <laughs> you need a day with each other. So Fridays was our garage sale day. And we've been doing that. We missed like two. I think two, maybe for mm -hmm. sure one, maybe two, but we did it every day for the last like four months. Yeah. We don't miss a beat. It, it literally is like, it's part of our routine. Mm -hmm. So one, we get to spend time together, lots of driving around. So we had a great time, but two, the business side, we did all the garage sales together. And I know most people are like, can't you cover more ground if you split up, which is true, mm -hmm. but we both have completely different sets of eyes out yep. for different types of products. Yep. So we both walk into the same sale. We'll demolish any potential product that is there yeah. between like my skill set that I've developed and then hers. Mm -hmm. We'll demolish the whole map. Yeah. There's nothing left behind. Um, versus if I go by myself, which we did a couple times, I went by myself, I pick out my stuff and then I'd walk right by like a hundred dollar jacket, not even know what I, what I was looking at. Yeah. Right. If she was there, she would pinpoint that I'd grab my stuff and then we'd be, we'd be done. And we find that we're able to sweep through a garage sale twice as fast doing that method. Yeah. We're in a garage sale, garage sale, usually for less than five minutes. But like Charles said, um, I'm picking up stuff that I want and he's picking up the stuff that he can immediately see and be like, Oh, I want that right away. You know, um, I picked up some hunter boots on Friday and he would have walked right past them. I would have been like, those are some <laughs> ugly purple boots. I don't know. <laughs> you, you guys always need a partner. You guys know Nate's um, search. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. We did a, we did a storage unit together and I was trying to, I was trying to bid people up on this storage unit. And this was the first unit that I've ever had dropped on me. Meaning, you know, like I bid it up, like I jumped the bid, you know, thinking that they were going to bid above me and then I was going to drop it on them and then they oh. never bid it and then I had to buy it. And, uh, and he ended up, he ended up, we split it. Amazing guy. We picked up this really crappy storage unit. We split it and, uh, and he helped me haul it into a U-Haul. He brought the U-Haul. I mean, you gotta have partners guys. That's the main thing. Gotta have partners. Um, Thank you, Mr. Pac-Man, my amazing ad. By the way, guys, he is the most amazing admin in the world for another great interview. I appreciate that super chat. I really appreciate that. So really quick, um, tell me a little bit about the little guy. You don't bring him, but do you think if you did, you would get a little bit better deal? Do you think? We Maybe brought he's up there. Him, brought him. And that's why he doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> he ends up walking away with so much loot. It is ridiculous. So, um. I think that people, you know, I we are pretty good at chatting people up and just being friendly, you know, with no other ulterior motive than just to be friendly. And if if they give us a good deal, that's awesome. And if not, then you know, you have to weigh out. I like, rarely pay full price. Yeah, we rarely pay full price, especially we do a lot of bundling. We'll have an arm full of stuff, so you know, it's they're they're way more willing to bundle if or give you a good price if you've got an armful of stuff that they don't have to haul away later, so. Uh, by the way, I've been to your Goodwill. It is massive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went in there and was like, 
the, the light literally shined on me when I went in there. I got, there was some good vintage stuff in there. I was shocked in yeah. there. Our goodwill, that's a benefit of living in a small town. A lot of people don't know that we live in a town of less than 30,000, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't super small, but it's not huge by any means. So that's a benefit is it's hit or miss. It's usually like super dry, but when it's good, it's really it's good. good. Yeah. I picked out from our goodwill for $7, a factory sealed Sony Walkman. It sold on eBay two days later for $150. So like wow. when it's good, it's good. <laughs> yeah. But I have to go in, uh, my gym is right next to it. So I go into that Goodwill every single day. I don't miss a beat. I'm in there every day. And I only find stuff like two days two, two days out of the whole week. Um, yeah. That's just the nature of the game. Yeah. If you guys want an autograph, you know where you need to go. <laughs> um, I may be lurking out there waiting. We'll see. If you get down um, here, let me know. We'll go out. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yes. No, I got, I, 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 I did find some Harley shirts when I was there, which makes sense, you know, being kind of where it's at McMinnville area. I, I would assume there'd be bikers, more bikers, you know? Um, all right. So this is the end part of the show here. I want to ask you some really, really, really important questions. It could be rapid fire if you like. Um, first question I want to ask you is how has social media changed your guys' life in regards to reselling? Like, how has being on Instagram and connecting with so many people on your guys' YouTube channel changed your guys' life and made your business better? That's a huge question. We can't rapid fire that. <laughs> I, um, I literally don't have words yeah. uh, for like, I, I don't know. I'm struggling to find the right way to put it. It's, I would still be doing reselling if it weren't for any social media, no YouTube, any of that. I still would be doing it because I, I, I'm a treasure hunter. I love it. But, I mean, it's, it's made it 10,000 times better. Mm -hmm. We've met some of our best friends we'll ever have in this life through social media, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we've been able, we've been blessed enough to have the opportunity to develop communities yeah. through Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. And throughout that, that gives us our biggest reward is the same thing why, why Wade, you probably do YouTube as well. Our biggest reward is content creators and Instagram influencers or whatever you want to call it. Um, the biggest reward is to be able to get that message that says, hey, I just wanted to say thank you for that tip or like that guidance or that phone call or something that you gave me, that video, mm -hmm. and I was able to do this that produced a result. I literally got, I didn't tell you about this yet. I got a phone call. I forgot to take, um, maybe I shouldn't say, oh, I'll say it out loud. I'll take it down tonight. I I have forgotten to take my cell phone number off of my website from years ago. Somebody, and I get random phone calls that I never answer. <laughs> I, I, I answered a call from Florida earlier today when I was driving, thinking it was some like telemarketer, which I've been getting a flood of. So I answered kind of like a groggy mood, like, hey, thinking it's gonna be a telemarketer. This guy, and he's probably, I don't know if he's gonna watch this, but thank you if you do. This guy named Dwayne uh, called, and he's like, oh my God, is this Chaz? I'm like, yeah, who's this? <laughs> Thinking it's one of like our VIP members or something. And, Cause they're the only ones that get access to my cell phone. I'm like, yeah, who's this? He's like, you don't know me, but I just started watching your videos like two weeks ago. I don't have a question. All I wanna say is just thank you because you have shown me a way to get my family out of debt. You've shown me a way to be able to get my wife out of a job she doesn't like. And that right there is like, that's why. Like that's, I will drop the reselling game altogether if I could just do that. That right there is why it's a huge reward. Um, and that's, there's no words for the impact that's had in, in our lives. I mean, and it's not because we're um, these, crazy extraordinary individuals we're regular people doing this thing you know and we're putting it on the internet for people to see and judge and maybe they can do it themselves but we've gotten so many people and like charles said it is a hundred times more rewarding for us than it is for the people who are watching or listening yeah. to get that message or that you know phone call or email or when we meet people in our on our meetups that are just like so um, that their lives are changed. And I really believe that we are all here on this planet to um, bless and serve other people. And so that is that is what social media has created for us. And um, it's insanely fulfilling and rewarding and um, 
we'll do it as long as we can. Did you ever think you would be, I mean, you're documenting your journey. You're approaching what 80,000, 80,000 amazing people following your journey. Did you ever think it would, it would get like this? Like, did you ever? Yeah. What? No. no. <laughs> so here's the funny part about YouTube. Yeah. I have been trying to build a YouTube channel for like nine years. No, not even nine. It's past 10 years now. I was, and I still have them. Sadly, <laughs> there's some not so pretty videos of me bouncing around my living room doing insanity <laughs> and P90X when I was trying to lose weight. Guys, so, nuggets right here, guys. Those, those channels are still there. I was trying so hard to produce content and produce content and produce content that was helpful to people in the fitness world year after year after year. And it got to like a thousand subscribers and it just, that was it. Right. So it was like failure after failure after failure. And then finally, so I did, I decided to make that switch that Gary V talks about, which is document a journey. Don't try to create stuff that you think people might want to watch. So when I got onto YouTube, mm -hmm. as far as a reseller, my first video, I literally, it was on my phone. I didn't have a camera or anything. It was just on my phone. I said, Hey guys, my name's Chaz. I ordered this big box of liquidation toys and I'm going to, I'm going to start selling on Amazon, see how it goes. I was three weeks into my journey, three weeks. This was almost three years ago. I was three weeks into my journey at $1,500 in sales. As far as profit, I was probably at like 300 bucks, right? I didn't know what I was doing. I was at like three or 400 bucks. And I just said, I don't know what I'm doing, but I just know I'm going to start documenting and show the progress. Mm -hmm. And then month after month after month, the Facebook groups grew that we were building. The YouTube channel grew. The Instagram grew, and it's I and, never and back never at that thought. time there was not this community that there, that there is now. Oh. There, um, you know, like Facebook and Instagram are are pretty baby considering like how long they've been around. But um, when we started, Charles was in you know a few Facebook groups, but they were all pretty negative and kind of like you know. You, it was kind of like fend for yourself, figure this out on your own, yep. and um, kind of people waiting around for you to fail. And we, we didn't like that. He didn't like that. And so that's where Facebook, the Facebook group, came from. Yep. He said, "You didn't have to do that." Thank you so much for the super chat, guys. She's actually in Oregon. Um, just went full time. Was a nurse as well. Um, and, um, I, I wish the world for you. She was messaging me, asking me what camera she uses for, or what she should get for blogging and, and starting her journey. So I appreciate that. You didn't have to do that, especially going full time, but I really appreciate it. Um, so guys, um, any advice you would give somebody? Cause you guys have seen my YouTube channel. Like I try to promote, uh, people starting up YouTube because I think it's a great, it's a great way to document your journey. And then I always say this, they're probably sick of me saying it, but God forbid if something happens to this handsome hunk right here, uh, the kids are going to want to see me, you know, video, right? And uh, and that's another reason, too, to do it for the family. So so is there any tips you can give somebody that is looking to start up the YouTube but maybe possibly is timid or doesn't want to put themselves out there but wants to create? Like what, what recommendations would you give somebody new starting a YouTube channel? I would say don't do it because – um, other ex people are expecting you to do it or you are putting that pressure on yourself. If it's genuinely something that you enjoy filming yourself doing, you know, thrifting or, you know, packaging up Amazon shipments or whatever the case may be, you, you have to, at the end of the day, you have to enjoy what you're doing. So if it's not something that you enjoy, don't do it. You, it will become a time suck an energy suck and, People can tell just quickly that you don't enjoy it. They're not going to watch you. Mm. Um, do what's, what what invests in your um, your being, your soul. And if that's YouTube, great. And if it's not, find other outlets to to do that. Yeah, I think my biggest tip would be you have to know what your strength is. Content is divided into three different segments or routes you can go you have video which is youtube you have written which is going to be a blog and then you have voice which is going to be a podcast so those are like your three main ways to do content 
-hmm. And this is coming from like, if we're talking about like helping other people create their own content, um, there's so many different ways you can do it, but no matter which one you choose, you have to know your strength. Like if you're just not comfortable on video and let me clarify, you're not going to be comfortable no matter what, when you first start video, like go watch my old, not this channel, not side hustle pros. If you go watch, um, <laughs> you just type in like better life, 90 P 90 X, just go watch my <laughs> first videos from literally like 10 years ago. I was not the same human being I am now. I was not comfortable on camera. Is, is and you'll see it like if you watch those early on videos you can hear my voice you can see it like look at what <laughs> I was not the same person so yeah. I wasn't comfortable but if you know that video is not going to be your outlet then choose if it's going to be written and in the form of a blog and or if it's going to be something that's voice in the form of like a podcast or even just like the basic Instagram account Instagram is great because you can do video written stuff as your captions and you can do voice Right? That's why Instagram is so powerful. Um, my biggest tip though, if you're gonna choose to do content, you've gotta stay consistent. It doesn't matter if it's once a week, if it's five times a week, whatever you choose as far as your consistency goes, stick with it. That's been the biggest, biggest thing. That's why a lot of us that host a weekly show, um, there's not much that pulls us away from that. Like if we have cell phone reception, we're probably gonna go live every Tuesday. Um, just like we're doing right now. Most of us that are content creators, you see that we all have a weekly show for a reason because it's mm -hmm. consistency. That's the biggest part of it. So I want to, um, my last few questions is I want to talk a little bit about your fitness. Um, I know that you are, man, I, you're, 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 I, I, I met you, like I shook my hand. I had to pull it back. I mean, you're, you got, I, I, I even gave you a little arm, a uh, little arm tap, you know, like you're, <laughs> <laughs> like, tell me a little bit about the fitness. I know that you have a fitness challenge. In fact, um, I I can't remember who it was, but um, somebody was in chat. That's part of it too. Um, so tell me a little bit about that. Tell me a little bit about the fitness challenge. Tell me tell me about that program real quick, and then I'm going to ask you about um, your YouTube schedule, and then we'll we'll taper it off. So what, what's going yeah. on with this fitness? Why are you staying buff? <laughs> Uh, it's lots of, it's just like reselling, right? You talk about the business, the same thing as if it took lots and lots of trial and error. Um, long story short, I started my journey at almost 230 pounds. Let, let's put that in perspective. I am 212 pounds right now as of this morning. Two, and I'm like, I'm not in great shape. I don't have a six pack or anything like that, but like I'm in good, I'm in decent shape. 230 pounds old me that you can see in the videos from the old channel. I was not healthy. That was really bad. Um, but I started getting heart palpitations, shortness of breath, like scary stuff as like early twenties, right. Or even mid twenties. Um, so I had some scary stuff going on later on, found out I had like pretty bad anemia, which I still battle with now. Uh, so I got all this crap going on. So I had to do something about it. So I was bouncing around doing like P90X insanity stuff early on. And then I branched out into the gym and that's where I really transitioned. So what I developed my own throughout my years of trial and error, I developed my own health and fitness program um, that I believe anyone can do. And that's what I've been doing is I host these six week challenges. So it's a private Facebook group. We usually have about 15 or 20 people that, that are in there. Um, and I basically went in a gym and I filmed myself doing each of the moves. And then I put them in a structured layout on a private website that you get access to. So I, I do this challenge now every six weeks and for the six weeks you're told okay day one you're gonna do upper body and then you click on the day one website and it shows you do this move do this many reps for this many sets eat this like I tell you exactly what to do it's pretty cut and dry so because that's the hardest part I found with going to the gym for the first time I'm like I don't know what any of these machines are I don't know how to do anything I'm super intimidated to go walk up next to the other people and do that stuff and so I wanted to make something that's easy to follow. You can modify it if you need to modify it. Um, so we've worked with people from, you know, 17 year old all the way up to like 65. Um, it's been really, really cool to be able to work with people for six weeks at a time. We've run four different groups now, four different rounds. We just finished the last one. Uh, we've got people that lost 20 pounds in six weeks, which was awesome. Uh, we've got other people that are starting to get off of like blood pressure medications and like crazy stuff. Like that's the cool results. Like losing weight is fun, but when you breathe better, 
when you get to play with your kids without running out of breath, um, like some of my best success stories I've had from the past were people that literally like couldn't walk up the stairs without huffing and puffing. They couldn't play with their kids at the park. They would sit on their phone the whole time. And then after they finish and they lose their weight, they're able to get up, run around, no problem. Those are the kinds of kinds of results that I love to see in people. Hey guys, guys I'm gonna, I, I will echo, echo here. Um, first being, um, I, I like Jenna means in there. There's a lot of resellers in there, and I think it's really cool. You can there's a lot of programs you can join for weight loss, but to be like again going back to the community to like not only try to like get a better mind and body because I, I truly believe. If you're fit, you're going to hit more garage sales. If you're mentally more there, you're going to do a lot better in this reselling game or anything in life in general. Uh, Got to stay healthy. We get one chance at this. And although I do want to reincarnate into like a bird or something and fly around the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that being said, I think that's really cool. The fact that you can be a part of this program and you get access to like, you know, a reseller that's giving you this information and you're reselling as well. It's, it's just I think that that part's really cool to me that, you know, he can tell me how to lose weight and he's selling like, you know, electronics from Goodwill. I just feel like I'm like, I, <laughs> it's awesome. Um, so to, how, how do you become part of the, how do you become part of this? Cause I've got a beer gut that I'm looking to maybe trim down. We have a question here, creating happy Mondays, which is an awesome name asked, where can we get information? Um, uh, so for that, I don't have like you get, anyone who knows me and follows our content. I'm not a marketer. I don't have like a sales funnel. I'm going to put you through and all this kind of stuff. Like just shoot me a message. Um, we just finished up this uh, last round. Uh, we do have a camping trip coming up next weekend. My goal, it's not set in stone. I would love to start the next round, like the, the Tuesday after Labor Day or like the following Monday after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. I think I still have some work. I, I want to do some updates on the website that's in there. Um, this is what I love about doing rounds is I get to improve it every single time. I see where my holes are in my boat and I'm going to go and fix those. Um, so we're going to start up in probably about another two weeks. Um, but you just shoot me a message on uh, Instagram or my email, which is chaz at sidehustlepros.com. Um, and I can get you plugged in for that. So Barry said, um, thrifty Santa, my, my amazing buddy. I need an app to smack the donuts out of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if we can work a hand that comes out. <laughs> you see Chaz in his hand. <laughs> uh, wifey, how do you keep the women off him, man? Working, working, uh, working, you know, making good money. <laughs> it's, it's the other way around, actually. She gets hit on. I, I haven't been hit on in a long time. She <laughs> legit gets hit on at least like. I don't even know how often, but you just got hit on a couple months ago. Remember, she came home like I still got red it. cheeks. She's like, <laughs> "Baby, guess what? I still got it. I got what? Like, what'd you get?" She's like, "Somebody hit on me." Of course, I'm like, "Who is he?" <laughs> <laughs> that boost of confidence. I tell you, I, I, I never get hit on. Like, I I get excited when I get carded at the bar. Okay. <laughs> uh, <and> the, <laughs> um, all right, so. Message Chaz on Instagram and or and or email if you guys want to join that. I think it's really cool. I was not joking in the sense that I need to get more healthy. Like I weigh 220 and it's all flab. So I need to get up there and do some work and eat more healthy. Especially now, like I read when you have kids, I feel like I drive a tad bit slower. And although Ashley says I drive like an old man, I drive really slow. So I, I only get to like two garage sales. No wonder I don't get any good stuff because they go to five or ten and I get to two, but um, no, I think it's really, really cool. And, and I can't stress the fact that like, I feel like it's, you're part of like two communities in one when it comes to that, like you resell and you're helping people better their lives with that. So it's really, really cool. Uh, Tell me a little bit about your YouTube channel. I want to know like, what is this YouTube channel all about? Do you have scheduled days that you like to go live? Those of you, and I, when I say those, I mean the two people that weren't subscribed to you already, what can they, <laughs> what can they look forward to when they go to your YouTube channel? for movies or, 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 I mean, sorry, shows in general. Um, we do our weekly live on Tuesdays, usually at six, 6 PM our time. Well, we switch to seven. We switch to seven. That's right. So, um, I forgot. Uh, so we have the live, um, you were, we were doing some vlog style. Um, but 
we're <laughs> slacking on that. <laughs> the le- between the office move, yeah. we had helped out a, another big, big seller. It wasn't our product, but we helped somebody ship in two or a, a thousand pair of shoes in Amazon. That, that took a long time. Yeah. Uh, so between doing that and moving our office, we're still not completely like organized with our office yet. There's had, there have been no vlogs uploaded in like a month, yeah. but usually you can expect a weekly vlog and that's where we do. I just bring my camera mm-hmm. and I show behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to what I'm showing. Sometimes it's just, heck if you, I'll just set my camera down and like we do our normal stuff. If you want to watch. Yeah. Um, and our lives are, are just like this. Um, we just kind of let everyone else run the show. We don't have an agenda. We don't think of questions. It's just, Whatever anybody wants to talk about, we just answer questions. We try to hit everybody's question. It's super hard sometimes if, if it gets really busy, you know, but uh, we do our best to answer every single question before we get out of there. And it's about an hour, a little over an hour usually. Yeah. Guys, go go to their next live and just like blow that, blow that chat up with the phone. <laughs> I want to make I'll be in there and I'll be scanning it and making sure they know that that's really cool and what about Facebook you guys have a really cool Facebook group can you can you take two seconds and explain that too yeah we've got a couple different ones um, if you just want the basic free groups to join we have Amazon FBA Rockstars specifically for Amazon and then we have an eBay Rockstars group um, those are kind of the two big ones we've got a couple more we're gonna be coming out with down the road that we're gonna focus on as well um, and then our big one that we do host, it's not big by size, but we limit it to 250 members. Um, and that's more of a private group. So that is our VIP group, which is a paid one. And do they, do they have access to you guys on that VIP? They do. Yeah. We do extra. That's why we had to change our YouTube live show. Trista, Tuesdays at 6, we'll do live eBay listings. And it's all via Zoom video. So that means that it's not just Trista's video. Everyone's videos are on and you can all chat share each other's screens, all that kind of stuff. So Ask that's where questions. Yeah. they do live eBay listings. Um, I'm going to be starting up a series where I do a lot of Facebook live videos just in that group um, that you won't find on YouTube or Instagram. And then we also produce a lot of extra specific content um, such as like Q4 is coming up. So my personal toys list is going to be in that group. Um, so just extra little bolos and that kind of fun stuff that goes with it. Just Thank something you. we couldn't put out on a, you know, we can't, we can't give this to 50,000 people, but we can, you know, give it to a smaller group. Then. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 that's the way I started, um, is like for me, when I was going into going full-time reselling, I was like, okay, who can I buddy up with? That's like crushing it. Right. Who can I buddy up? And then, then you got to ask the question. Um, for me, it was Chris, you know, he was 10 K on the Bay at that time. And I was like, I need, I want to get good buddies with Chris. And the only way I can do that was to, I mean, let's be honest, you guys, now that I'm working full time, I realize now that my time is like, I even cut out TV and I'm still running around with a chicken with my head cut off trying to like get everything done. Right. So, um, I understand time is limited and I was like, okay, so I joined his Patreon, which is, you know, a, 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 a common way. And I got his phone number, became good buddies with him. And then I feel like my game elevated cause I felt like I had to do good if you're part of a group like that, especially a paid one. So yeah. yeah. When you put your money towards something, like you want to see something out of it, and uh, so that's for me, that was the thing. Like I, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna put money into this. I want to get something out of it, and for me, it was access to him and his and and what he had at the time. So, really cool stuff. All right, so we have 84 people watching. We had over 100 at one point. You guys are amazing. I'm sorry we took so long, but honestly, um, I could have drove to McMinnville there and back by the time. This was done. <laughs> it would have been hilarious had I had them talk the whole time. I drove over there and then I would have been on there. Oh my gosh, that would have been awesome. <laughs> Jesus, I should have done that. Okay, well, anyways, guys, like, please like the video because although everybody in the YouTube world already knows this amazing couple, maybe a few more people don't. So if you like the video, it gets sent out in the YouTube world and more people can discover them. Um, and we always leave off the show with words of wisdom. You guys remember last time. Um, so, guys, this could be reselling related, non reselling related. Just uh, inspirational words of wisdom to give out to the crowd it would be awesome. Uh, one, one each, please. One each. Just one um, word? No, no. Um, like, just oh. <laughs> words, of, words of wisdom. Like, um, you know, it could, honestly, guys, I'm stumped, but hopefully you guys got something. We're doing one word. I'll say demolish. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think you can, you can say a couple more words. Um, I don't know. My mine would be the same thing that I say all the time. I'm sure people it's just white noise by now. <laughs> if you feel your best, you give your best. And here's what here's what I like to explain to people. What, what I mean by that is if you personally between physical or mental feel like crap what like, how great is your business going to be right if you feel phenomenal you're gonna have a phenomenal business it's just that's just how it is that's fact okay so when you feel your best you give your best and what that means as far as tangible action steps is if you've been telling yourself time and time again man i just really need to lose like 20 30 pounds and you feel like crap all the time then do it like that's as simple as it needs to be make the commitment not because you're motivated we talked about that make the commitment that you're going to start walking for 20 minutes a day start doing some yoga go to the gym get a at-home workout program i don't care what you do just do something that's going to make you feel better because when you feel your best you give your best that's mine yeah i would second that and just say like if you're um if you're finding yourself in a in a negative mindset change that up and i'm so guilty of this i'm i'm constantly second guessing you know this or that or buying this you know item or you know maybe this isn't the best way to run my ebay store but you know just get your head out of that negative mind space and that could be through reading or I listen to tons of podcasts or um, I have an audible account. I, I listen to books all the time. Um, just get yourself out of that, um, that gray space and always be feeding your, your head and your heart with really good stuff and um, you'll be happy. I, I didn't ask this, but how did you guys meet? How did we meet? <laughs> you want to hear the big love story? Uh, we both worked at the, <laughs> At a Quiznos, that's <laughs> that's how romantic that is. <laughs> uh, so, right yeah. out of high school, she was. All right, we got, girl. I liked her. Yeah. <laughs> we got two more two more minutes, guys. First of all, Quiznos in this area is, I love Quiznos. Like, <laughs> what the heck happened to them? I don't know. They just yeah, all they, went out of business. They went down. <laughs> I I went, went, here's the crazy part. Like, I I started working in Quiznos when I was. 16. Yeah. I just turned six, not even just turned. I think I was still like late 15 when I started working at Quiznos. I worked there for three years. I paid my way through massage therapy school at Quiznos. So I learned my biggest life and business lessons at that job. Mm -hmm. Like the dumbest stuff, like when you wipe a counter, you don't wipe around stuff, you pick it up and do it the right way. And the one thing that my boss had told me one time, for some reason, this thing stuck. I hated it at the time, but he said, if your name is on it, it better be the best it can be. Like, cause you know how in, in any restaurant you have that checklist, you have to initial, like I swept the floor, I mopped, I wiped the counters. He, and when he was showing me that, cause I messed up a lot, right? <laughs> 15, 16, 17 year old who just didn't care. Uh, he would constantly bring me back to the back room, look at that checklist, like Charles, if your name is on this, it better be your best work. For some reason that I always clicked. That's just random little Quiznos fact, but yeah. <laughs> so I worked there for what a year, and then you started. Yeah. And then we we got we to know each other. We were friends and worked together for a whole year. So we had a really great foundation of just a friendship mm -hmm. uh, before we started like hanging out outside of work, which is great. Yeah. Now, um, do you still remember uh, Quiznos recipe? Every one of them. And what's worse is that he sees like our regular customers around town and Still he'll be to like, day. he'll like name them by their sandwich. I know which sandwich. If I see an old <laughs> customer, which happens inside the grocery Often. store here, I can name, oh, that's Wilma. She, she ordered five traditionals, two are regular, <laughs> two large, one small. The small one did not have olives, but the two <laughs> larges would have extra tomato. Like I remembered all that crap. <laughs> Guys, let, let's do this. Like let's revive. Quiznos. <laughs> Each one of us, let's put a thousand dollars in. We'll open a Quiznos up. We already have our two workers here. Know that they know the menu. Um, was it? Was it? So it was. It was love at first sight, but it took a year to bloom and blossom. What was your first? What was the first? Do you guys remember the moment? The first like, 
Did he take you out to dinner? Like, what was the first date date? Do you remember? No, we were just hanging out. We we watched <laughs> Fifty First Dates yeah. at her parents' house. Yep. And we were we called. So here's quick backstory. This is a lot of intimate detail for the. Internet. So uh, we here's the thing. We shouldered on the first date. Yeah, we shouldered on the first date. What that means is we were watching Fifty First Dates. And our shoulders touched. And we like we were at the awkward phase where like we wanted to hold hands, but neither one of us had the balls to like step up and do it. So we went like this. Yeah, we were just shouldering. <laughs> oh my god, that's almost as worse as the checkoff. Like, do you want to do you want to date me? Like, you know, back in like junior high. Uh, that's uh, that was our love story. Good times, guys. Guys, I tell you, if I ever see the Quiznos, I'll take a picture of it and send it. I think there is a couple yeah. people around. Um. But I appreciate, we still have, by the way, you said very, very intimate stuff, but we still have 88 people wanting to hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Go to the list. Uh, I, I, uh, 88, can we get 89? Can we get 89? <laughs> uh, guys, thank you so much for joining. Show some love to this couple. Go subscribe to them. Go, uh, go like me. Oh, we got 90, by the way. Two more people want to hear about oh. it. Woo. Uh, it's crazy to me, like, the, the like, this reseller community seems big, right? But really when you break it down, it's very, very small. So many cool people. And um, I I am really humbled to have them both in my states because I, I, I will definitely be going to more reseller meetups. And um, I just want to say, guys, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, appreciate all the, the, the hour and 35 minutes that you've been on here. Uh, all the nuggets you gave, the Quizno story, is this thing's going to go viral. If you guys think this video is going viral, let me know. <laughs> is this going viral put it in chat yes or no is this going viral um guys also i will say it again if you are not subscribed to them you can subscribe in the the uh description um, their facebook groups one for amazon one for ebay and um ask them about the vip which is how i got started and then also guys let me know if you want i did see a couple people want to do thrift battles um oh, that'd be epic <laughs> i so i think i would get my butt kicked but i am willing to get my butt kicked for you guys guys if you want me if you, if you want me to do garage sale seasons over now. i know we, we did sale. a garage sale war with the rally roots once that was really fun it, but we could do a thrift store one with you yeah we could do thrift I, i'll do clothes so i know that you know, he's a little weaker in the clothes department. That's true. I know nothing. Um, you have to set up we'll perimeters, do... though, because we might end up going to the same thrift stores. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine if we showed up to the same one? Oh, I would do that on purpose. I would, I would do that. <laughs> I would be lurking right where he, he's working out. I know he's going to come in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. And I'm going to put some – I'll put some pressure on Wade. Wade, if you want to get going on the next round for the fitness challenge, it's going to probably start in the next couple weeks. I will get you a one week pass to my gym. If you're willing to make the trip down, <laughs> no extra charge. I'll train you for the first week of the program. Guys, that is, an, do you, do you, let me know in chat if you want to see the beer belly. That'd be epic. Well, dude, well, let me know guys. I've never showed it. I've always like, <laughs> I've always sucked it in for you guys. It looks like a six pack, but really it's not. <laughs> so let me know if you guys want to see the beer belly before we leave. Um, but th that being said, guys, that would be amazing. I, I am actually like, I've been having a little bit of health issues actually recently. For example, um, I've been having to take milk thistle. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I don't know. So I went in there, right. Um, I had my, my physical done. They said my liver was like elevated four times the normal rate. And then he, he told me that there's some sort of enzyme that I'm lacking and he's, he was 72 years old. And uh, he was 72 years old, and he said that he had, like, there was some sort of enzyme that you get when you work out, and he said his levels were higher than mine, which is odd because I, like, you know, I don't work out, but I walk around, you know, and, and you know, I'm up out of the chair a lot. Um, but he says I need to get that level up. Like, that's what keeps you young is, like, yeah. some sort of enzyme. I can't remember what it was, but um, it was crazy. So uh, wait, only if Wade works out in the ramen outfit. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Are you talking about this outfit? Yeah, can, can we make that a thing? <laughs> guys, I don't think – Chaz, would you even work out with me with this on? I don't know. I would do it for the content. <laughs> do, it, 
guys, that thing, Super Soup is amazing. Um, so, all right, guys. Well, we got to get going here. I got to be respectful of their time. They got to, he's got to get cooking. And um, I, I really, now I know the Quizno story. I know now why he's the cook. But uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate you guys joining tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining. And so please hit the like up, the thumbs up. Please like the video. And until next time, guys, we have four more interviews. To tomorrow, we have Frenchie, the real stitch, is going to be joining the show, guys. So I look forward to a 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. Have a great night, guys. Awesome. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah.